All right, welcome everyone to Wednesday Night Bible Study. We are into Galatians chapter 5. Let's dig in. All right, Galatians, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Galatians 5.1, let's begin reading. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Really a little thought in itself. He freed us for the sake of freedom. And this is building off of what he was talking about previously, that there's the the slave, um, you know, contingent that is from a, you know, at least mindset-wise, descendant of Hagar. Then there is the free woman uh, talking about believers uh, represented there in um, the descendants of Sarah. Uh, and again, it was controversial. We talked about that last week. And so here he's kind of recapping. For freedom, he has set you free. You believers are the free ones. And he says, therefore, don't submit. Don't purposely choose to go under a yoke of slavery. He says, look, I, Paul, say to you that if you accept circumcision, now he's giving a very specific example about the law here. If you accept circumcision, Christ will be of no advantage to you. Really interesting. Now, I don't think he's saying it wouldn't be any make any logical sense or elsewhere in Scripture to say that if you're circumcised, you can't be saved. Certainly not what he's saying. And he's not, he, of course, he brings up circumcision, but he's making a much broader statement about the law. He takes something that is so easy and so obvious with the law of circumcision, something that even predates the law because it's something that God had Abraham even do. All right, and so he says... If you are taking on circumcision to basically as your evidence of salvation, you can certainly imagine a Jewish person, if they were asked, how do you know you're going to go to heaven? How do you know you have a relationship with God? How do you know you're one of God's children? I think it'd be a very normal thing to say, well, because I've been circumcised. I've been identified as being in the covenant with God. All right. And he's saying that Christ has no advantage for you. Why would you need Christ? If you thought your obedience to the law saved you. And here's the danger he's pointing out. If you are hedging your bets. So here are these Jewish Christians clearly also having conversations with Gentile Christians. Essentially telling them they too need to obey the law. You go get circumcised. And he's saying if you listen to that and go get circumcised thinking, well, I guess I need that for salvation. You're trusting in circumcision for salvation, but the same thing would be true if you were saying uh, not eating pork. If you're saying, well, I better not eat pork because maybe that'll be what saves me. Or, oh, I better bring animal sacrifices. Maybe that's what saves me. Oh, I better, you know, not wear two different kinds of clothing. Maybe that's what saves me. Anything that you are accepting in the thought of, oh, this is what makes me acceptable before God is a hindrance to Christ. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. The other way we could say this is Jesus plus something ruins everything. All right? If you add anything to the gospel, you are then saying that Jesus himself isn't good enough. All right, let's keep reading. Uh, I testify again to every man who accepts circumcision that he is obligated to keep the whole law. Uh, and so I think what was happening is some of the Judaizers were like kind of mix and matching the law a little bit. The easiest one to mix and match is to say, well, you got to obey the law, but I guess just not the sacrifices anymore. I guess Jesus is our sacrifice. Or, uh, and especially, the, I do know, the temple hadn't been destroyed at this point, but that's even a bigger argument after the temple was destroyed. You couldn't make sacrifices anymore. Um, and, and then you could, you might be able to say like, yeah. I, I think you got to obey this part of the law, but not this part. He's saying, listen, if you're going to obey, he, he's being sarcastic. He's not actually saying keep the whole law. He's saying, no, if you think you have to be sacrificed, uh, excuse me, you think you have to be circumcised or you have to eat pork or you have to do this or you have to do that, whatever you say about the law, if you think you have to do that, you got to obey all of it. Like it's an all or nothing package. You can't say I'm going to obey part of the law because that's the saving part of it and not this part, no. A, none of the law is the saving part. And not, you're not obligated for any of it. All right, so if you think you got to be obligated to some of it, you're obligated to all. 
but you're not obligated to any is really what he's saying. Verse four, you are severed from Christ. You would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. So he's, he's calling out right there. You are severed from Christ. If you add in another piece, all right, if you add something to salvation, if you say, yes, you need to trust Jesus as your savior, plus be circumcised or trust Jesus as your savior, let's go to more modern day stuff and go to church or and read the Bible or and pray or and do this or and do that. Whatever you want to and do to that is going to mess it up. Anything that you are going to add to it is saying Jesus isn't enough that Jesus did 99% of the saving, and then this does the 1% of the saving. All right, Whatever you're doing, you are saying that Jesus isn't good enough sir, for salvation, and you have fallen from grace. There's a fancy word we use for this. We call it apostasy. All right, there are, Anything that you're wrong about God's word, theology, anything like that, you would be called a heretic. Now, we usually hear that word and think, oh, what a terrible word. It, it is a bad word, but it's not as bad as you would think heresy just means you're believing something incorrect and the real truth is we probably all believe something that's incorrect i mean there's the likelihood all right so likelihood wise we're all heretics in some way uh it doesn't mean i think you can be more of a heretic if you're taking if you're going against scripture than something obvious you're heretical in a very obvious way that's really problematic all right but here he's not calling this heresy he is calling it apostasy he is saying that if you actually do that, you're not saved. To be fallen from grace is saying you're never saved to begin with. That if you think Jesus isn't enough for salvation, you think you need Jesus plus something else, you're not really saved. Salvation is by grace through faith alone. Verse 5, for through the Spirit, by faith, we ourselves eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness. For in Christ, Jesus neither, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. And this is the real point here. All right, the real point that he is making here is he says it doesn't matter if you've been circumcised or not. If you've been circumcised, don't think that you're better off because you've been circumcised. And if you haven't been circumcised, don't think that you're worse off. And actually in Christ it doesn't matter because if you put your faith and trust in Jesus, you're saved. Period. End of story. All right. And so this is a big, strong case he makes against the law here. If you're thinking about the law in any way of it bringing salvation, you have added something to the gospel, and he is really harsh with it. All right. We got a couple questions that we will ask. I'll put it in the discussion board. Look forward to talking to you all on Sunday and next week. God bless.